welcome to Passion Time. I'm here with Cindy Merrill to talk about something that maybe we don't like to talk about too much, but we need to because times are changing and we are facing some serious issues with regards to life and death. And she's with Texas with Dignity. Um, she's a former assistant district attorney. And her life changed when her father passed away. But before we start, I'd like to ask you, how are you living your passion? How did you find your passion? Well, Patricia, unfortunately, my passion grew out of a, a, a well of sorrow. Okay. Uh, I was living in Houston at the time, and uh, my parents were living in San Antonio. Their health was declining terribly. And I was over there visiting them one time in 1996, and my father pulled me away and said, Cindy, get me a gun. I can't go on like this. Well, I was a serious daddy's girl, mm -hmm. and I gasped, and he immediately said, I didn't mean it, but we both knew that he did, right. because he had been, um, had advanced Parkinson's, he had been blind for many, many years, he had serious lung problems, he couldn't walk but a few steps and never without a walker, and this had been a very vibrant man, right. Right. and he had a, a, an incredible history and now he was just existing day to day, week to week, month right. to month, year to year. And after his death, I started thinking, why should anybody go through this? And one day, I was out in West Texas on a hiking trip to Big Ben. Okay. And I was going Lovely through uh -huh. the little town of Marathon. Yeah. And my husband and I were kind of going through these little shops and we went to a hardware store of all places. And I was going through it, and all of a sudden my eye caught a corner hutch way in the back. And as I walked closer, I saw that it was just maybe 15 books in a hardware store. So I made a beeline to that hutch, and the first book I saw was a book that said, Must We Suffer Our Way to Death? And, you know, Carl Jung would call that a right. synchronistic moment. Absolutely, yes. And that yes. started me down the path. So then you decided to find uh, Texas with Dignity. Tell me about that. That was many that years was many later, years many years. Because f after I retired, um, I was involved in a lot of activities. But it was still in the, this, back, of your mind. In the back of my mind. And about 2003, I saw an opportunity to write a letter to the editor, to the Chronicle wasn't published. Mm -hmm. I did it again. I did it again. Never I wrote an op-ed. Never published. And so in 2003, I gave a presentation at the Chautauqua of the Spires. And I kept doing I kept writing. And then I gave another presentation later on at the Jung Center, which okay. I, was, I was very involved with the Jung right, Center, right. still am. And this went on until 2013 when the, uh, I was a member of both national organizations for Right to Die, and the Death with Dignity National Center emailed me and said, we would like to introduce you to several other people in Texas who are interested. Are trying to do something. Mm -hmm. And Penny Shelfer, who was from uh, Clear Lake, or League City, I think it was League City, she and I got together and that day, we said, we're going to start a, a grassroots advocacy. And it was 2013 when we started. And we first called ourselves end-of-life options in Texas, uh -huh. but we thought that was too long. So we decided on Texas Death with Dignity. Let's talk about what you're trying to achieve with the Death with Dignity, because you're trying to change some laws. Um, and, and you know you're aware of how to do that, because you're a lawyer, or an assistant district attorney, former. Um, tell me what you're trying to do, what your goal is. Well, we decided right at the beginning that first we were here to educate the citizens because death is not something people really want to focus on. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. But we, have to, we, we knew that first you have to get the citizens involved. Absolutely. So we did it through, again, um, letters to the editor, which... The Chronicle started printing. Finally, in 2019. Right, eh, finally. It's been a while. <laughs> um, we decided to create a Facebook page. Okay. Uh, we have a fledgling website. Mm -hmm. I give presentations. 
Uh, Penny comes with me and helps me, helped me with the Q&A. Um, we were interviewed after Brittany Menard, the 29-year-old, right, 29, 29, woman. California woman, woman who went to Oregon. Beautiful woman who, who yes. They chose. interviewed us on TV and radio. And finally, after that, the Houston Chronicle printed my uh, opinion uh, article on aid and dying. Tell me what you mean when you say aid and dying. What, what are you trying to achieve? What would you like the law to say? Uh, well, we think there's already a blueprint, and that's the Oregon law. The Oregon law. The Tell Washington the Oregon law, law. Right. did it. You're the the only... Vermont law, the California law, it's right. all pretty much the same. Okay, and what, is it, what does and it say? It is this, it's an opportunity for a citizen mm -hmm. who is terminally ill, who is within... Uh, six months of dying, competent, informed, to um, ask a doctor to provide them a prescription for a lethal pharmaceutical okay. to end their life at the time of their choosing right. in a um, safe and gentle and compassionate manner. Okay. And there are like 13 safeguards to make sure that no one is being uh, compelled to do it. The, the patient must ask for it, not, nobody else, not a doctor, right. not a family not or children, friend, right. not the children. Um, the two oral requests, uh, two, one written request, which must be witnessed by two people who know the victim, know the, uh, patient, the patient, and uh, cannot financially benefit from the death. Exactly. Right. So there's 13 hoops they have to go Jump through before they can before they can even get the prescription. What are some of the things they're doing to um, to exit? Um, is it medication only? Is it? I understand. There's helium. There's different ways they can choose what how they're no. going to die. Or no. No. Okay. Uh, in all of these states, it is through some type of l lethal pharmaceutical, okay. some type of barbiturate. Okay. Uh, there's, uh, it's constantly changing. Mm -hmm. the, the compounding is changing. So um, that is the only way, okay. that through uh, legally Legal. in those states. Tell me what's going on with Texas and how close are we to getting some sort of uh, laws to help people who choose to die this way? We are not close at this point, but I am very optimistic that it's going to happen. The reason that we are not close at this point is because uh, the, the party in power right now, the Republican Party, unfortunately in their state platform, they have a right to life platform mm -hmm. whereby uh, they are opposed, they lump together, um, uh, Euthanasia, which is not legal anywhere in the country. Not in the United States. It's not legal anywhere in the United States. Mm -hmm. they, le they link genocide, euthanasia, with assisted suicide. And of course, we don't call it assisted suicide. We call it assisted dying, because a suicide wants to die. Right. But a terminally ill person wants to live, right. but they've been but given a death sentence. Exactly. And they're not, and, and they're, the quality of life isn't there anymore. Oh no, oh no. What do you, uh, what are some of the biggest challenges do you think you're facing to change the law in Texas? Besides, you mentioned the Republican Party platform. What are some of the things that you run into when you give presentations and people say, "No, we can't do this"? Why? Well, one th the one real problem is we don't have, unlike Washington and Oregon, we don't have a referendum process whereby you can start a petition and have a certain uh, number of petition in order to get it on, right, uh, a, on a ballot. ballot yeah. We don't have that in Texas. People have tried to get a referendum process, but the, they jealously guard their right uh, to create bills. It has to go through a bill. Then it has to go through a committee. It can be stymied anywhere. I actually know it's true because I meet Republicans all the time when I give uh, these talks. Yeah. And uh, national surveys show that a majority of Republicans are for an aid and dying bill. But what I've been told, whether it's true or not, 
is that there are many Republican legislators that would like this bill, but they are concerned that the Tea Party activists will run an opponent against them, oh. would put money into their opponent's uh, race and put boots on the ground. And so they're afraid to speak up because they're afraid of having an opponent. Okay. That's what I've been told. But it's all I can tell you is that there are many, many Republicans who are in favor of this. Politics as usual. All right, well, Cindy, what, what can get, how can people get involved if they're interested in, in, in learning more about this or becoming part of this grassroots organization that you have? I tell them to do several things. One, go to the Death with Dignity National Center website and learn what aid and dying is. Two, go on our Texas Death with Dignity Facebook and website because we are constantly showing news items, mm -hmm. articles. In fact, we just had a fantastic article published in uh, the Houston Chronicle from a uh, uh, Professor Eklund Olson from the University of Texas mm -hmm. on this very topic. And we have a link to it from our Facebook page. Okay. So they can educate. They can send their stories. And that's what we want. We want them to share the stories of the bad deaths they have experienced with family and friends. Mm -hmm. And they can do that. They can share those stories. The third most important thing, once they've educated themselves, once they've shared their stories, is to contact their legislators, their state senators, and tell them why they want this bill, this law, mm -hmm. and ask them would they support it, and if not, why. Okay. So you, you really put him on the spot, right? I really do. All right, Ms. Merrill, thank you so much. And thank if you. you're interested in um, learning more about this organization, can you share your website, please? It's Texas Death with Dignity. Texas Death with Dignity. And that's also a Facebook page, correct? Uh, it's the Texas. same Facebook page. All right, Texas Death with Dignity. Cindy Merrill, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so time. much for asking. And we'll see you next time on Passion Time. <laughs>